please stop killing spiders. I get it. I I'm scared of spiders too. When I was little, maybe seven or eight, I was getting ready for bed. I looked down and saw a large spider crawling up my PJs. The inside of my PJs. I screamed, I panicked, I cried, and I've... I've pretty much had that reaction ever since to any encounter with a spider. Finally, after a near miss with an orb weaver spider in my garage while taking out the recycling, I decided that I had to do something about this. I mean, I was a grown-ass man with a house. I couldn't be calling my dad in tears to come over at 10 p.m. because a spider had built a web between my trash can and my car, and I wasn't sure how I was going to get to work the next day if it wasn't removed. I allowed a large spider to move in at the base of the steps leading into my garage. She built a thick, messy web like a gauze sheet and hid herself underneath it. I had to step over every time I wanted to get into my car. In time, another of her kind joined her, then another, until I had a line of three sentries at the door of my house. Like the Furies, except these were skittish ambush predators, <laughs> waiting for prey to come to them and hiding whenever I walked past. Initially, I sort of hopped through their doorway, trying to put as much distance between us whenever I stepped over. Gradually, I grew used to their presence and eventually stopped paying attention to them at all. I'm much better about spiders now. I've held the smaller ones. I've been let a larger jumping spider crawl across my fingers that I pressed against the ground in its path. I didn't have to call my dad to kill spiders in the house for me. After what I saw, however... I'm not going to kill them at all anymore. While I was trying to overcome my fear of spiders, a friend tried to help by sending me stories. How spiders were the first weavers, and most memorably, a Cherokee story about a grandmother spider. It wrapped up the sun in her web and brought it to the earth so that we might all have light. Spiders weren't something to be feared, she said. They were our helpers. I didn't need to be afraid of grandmother spider. I wish reality was that kind. The truth is far more terrifying. So I went for a hike in the park that sits on the edge of the city. It's a large stretch of forest and fields with interlocking trails that wind along rivers and up and down the hills. It's fairly populated during the spring and summer, so I was certainly not alone, not until I left the riverside trail behind it. I met a handful of other people as I walked. Determined hikers like me, they, all, they just nodded, kept going. Wanted to get their seven or ten mile loop done. I was alone on the stretch of trail. But I found the spiders. They crossed the path in a line, walking one behind the other in a single file, a vast array of sizes and shapes. I hadn't gone so far as to memorize what each kind is. I only recognized the orb weavers due to their distinctive coloring which has been burned into my memories after that time that I almost ran into one face first in my garage. I stood there. I watched this unusual sight for a few minutes, bewildered by their behavior. I'm not an expert on spiders by any means, but I think anyone would realize that seeing this wide variety all walking in a row like this is bizarre. And so many. I realized I'd seen at least 20 pass me by in the first few minutes. And as I continued to watch, they continued to walk past in an unbroken string. 50, perhaps, then 100. Still, they came. I looked to the right, tracing their line in my eyes. I saw the rippling row traversing the forest floor as if as far as I could see. Look to my left, it was the same. A line of spiders all traveling to the same destination. I decided to follow them. I mean, yeah, I've read Harry Potter like everyone else. I remember the part with the spiders and Aragog, but that's fiction. I thought what I was seeing was some natural oddity that, that could be explained if I just found their destination. Maybe ask someone that studied spiders the right questions. <sighs> God, I, I wish it was Aragog that I found. They led me downhill to a shallow spot between the rolling hills. 
I think at some point, as I wound through the sparse brush and over fallen logs, they led me someplace else entirely. I felt like the quality of the air changed. It grew denser, like it was, it was pressing on my chest. I began to grow nervous at that point, wondering if perhaps this behavior was due to some chemical in the air, and here I was, breathing it in. I set that aside as a crazy, wild invention of a mind being allowed to run too loose with its imagination. Then the light changed, subtly, and I thought that perhaps I should turn back, that the, the dimming of the light between the trees was from clouds gathering over the sun and that the, the weather was preparing to change abruptly. I kept going, however, rationalizing that I've come this far, be ashamed to give up, when surely, surely, an answer to this mystery was just ahead. I'll be honest, I've, I've done some dumb shit simply because I didn't know when to turn back. I continued to follow the spiders. Then the earth dropped into the steep, sudden slope, and I, I stopped short, loose dirt crumbling under my feet to roll down the incline to the gate before me. I wasn't in the park anymore. I was elsewhere, though I had no idea where that elsewhere was. Before me was a massive, open space, a circular pit large enough to swallow a house. The trees all around it grew inward curving upward towards a hidden sun and sending out their branches as if they could hide away what lay beneath them from the muted light. There was no wind, the air was stagnant, the smell of damp earth, a, a stale scent. No wind, no sound, save for the rustle of minuscule legs from the millions and millions of spiders that filled the pit. There were four lines making their way to the depression. The one I stood beside, and then uh, three more, aligned like a compass along the circle. They crawled down the bare earthen sides and then skittered in amongst the teeming, undulating mass of spiders that rose and fell and broke along the edges like the ocean. I stared at this for some time. Panic was lodged like a stone in the back of my throat. A remnant from when I was a little kid, seeing a dark shape moving up the inside of my white PJs. I fought it. I shoved it down into my stomach, and I remained rooted to the spot, nauseous with lingering terror and revulsion at the undulating sight before me. And then... Then I began to feel like something was watching me. Like a touch on the back of my neck, running along my spine and slapping at my skin in sudden panic, thinking perhaps a spider had crawled up on me. But no, there was nothing there. Spiders remained in their line, oblivious to my presence and intent on joining their brethren in the pit. Still, the sensation remained a crawling, aching sort of anxiety that clawed at my nerves and made me think that perhaps I should just turn around and go. I edged away from the pit and then the spiders surged, a bulge forming just a, a handful of yards from where I stood, watching. Then I staggered backward and screamed, as my will broke, like skin breaking, the mass of spiders split open, and I saw a film underneath, downy white, layers and layers of spider silk, and then that too began to tear apart. From beneath it emerged a mouth. Uh, no, 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 uh, it was part of a mouth. The, the fleshy red-pink gums, a, a line of teeth, like those of a shark, each the size of my head. Another row of teeth, and another, and another, spiraling down into the darkness of the edge of the spider's broken webbing. The mouth spasmed, and spiders rained down inside of it, struggling to free themselves of its own saliva before falling still between the rows of teeth. The survivors rushed to fill the gap, crawling over each other, drawing the line of that living ocean closer. I saw the trails of spider silk they left behind. I, I watched their struggle without moving a muscle as if paralyzed with terror. I felt like, like I was fixed in place, pinned there by an inescapable will of which I wholly occupied his attention. My arms prickled with goosebumps as my throat was dry and the mouth continued to thrash and now the, in, the entire pit buckled and rippled with that thing struggle, spiders pouring into the pit, spinning their web, weaving the cage that kept their captive from rising out of the earth. 
I realized it was me that was doing this. It was reacting to my presence. It was trying to break free. It was an effort to turn, like I was moving through water. I began to run, even as my limbs tried to drag me down, and it was as if the air itself refused to enter my lungs. My chest burned, but I kept going, almost, almost on my hands and knees, clawing my way forward, back to the hill, away from the horrific pit. The thing screamed. It was like the sound of metal being torn apart, like a thousand voices all shrieking in that metallic, ear-splitting tone. And it changed. A choking, gurgling sound like something drowning. The spiders, I realized, pouring over it, sacrificing their bodies to cover it once more with their webs, the dead creating a bridge for the living to, to keep going, to keep weaving. Until it was covered up once more. I ran until the air thinned and the sunlight returned. I ran until I reached the trail and then I... Then I ran until I came to a fork and there was a, a bench. There were people and the only thing I could stop and collapse and catch my breath on. A young couple stopped and asked if I was okay. I said I was. Just that I was terribly afraid of spiders. I had one fall on me and, well, maybe it was undignified, but I freaked out and I ran. They laughed. They said it was understandable. Man offered me some water. I thought it was out of that mouth. The spiders falling to their death in its saliva and I, I refuse. When I got home, I stared at the three sisters living at the base of my stair steps. I stared at them for a long time. I shivered in an involuntary shudder, but it, it was not at them. It was what I saw, what I remembered. And the thought that someday these three furies would heed some silent call to part my garage journey out to that place, join the rest of their kind in the pit. Please. Please, I beg you, do not kill spiders. I understand if you're afraid of them, I was too. But I felt the weight of that creature's malevolent attention, and I... I feel like... Like I've seen the doom of our world. And the spiders are the ones holding it back. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you a great big thank you for watching tonight's video. I'm also gonna tell you about one more thing because I wanna be a good husband. My wife's tea shop is open again. If anybody had missed out on your chance before to order her mixed herbal tea blends, then now's your chance. And she's putting out some new Dungeons and Dragons themed tea now that it's open. It's what she does. She does mixed Dungeons and Dragons teas. The tea shop is etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea. And uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy that or want to check her out because she's cool. And Susie from the Game Grumps even got stuff from her. So it's people like it. I want to give an extra big thank you to Tyler Ramberg, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca. Really hope I said that okay. The Red Oak Shield Virus, Cindy Barney, Melissa Swigart. Chimpinski, Dante Rao, The Ginger Bros, Andreas Solvik, and Andrew Steinberg. Stenberg? Stenberg. Andrew Stenberg. You guys are those amazing patrons who have been supporting the channel on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and I owe you guys big time for helping me keep the lights on. In fact, I owe all of you guys who watch or listen to Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube or on the podcast. If you guys would like to get the stories first, then you can always check me out at youtube.com slash mrcreepypasta and subscribe. Or, if you guys like listening on the mobile, then our podcast is also available on Spotify, Google, and iTunes. Thanks so much, kids. And sweet dreams. <laughs>